Oh, yeah. Here we go again. Let me see. Let me pull up my rules. My rules, rules, rules. What are the golden rules? We are now at rule number six of Radio Rec LLC, True School Hip Hop Since 2009 by your boy, me, Univiso MC. And what are we covering? We want to know if you really want this independent artist lifestyle. Do you really want this? Because I'm going to give you the truth about what it means to be an independent recording artist and owning your own label. Not a label to sign other folks, but you could do that if you want. But I'm just saying, you know, as an independent artist, right, you have no major record label, right? You still are a recording artist, but you're not a major recording artist. You're independent. So if you're not signed to an independent label, you are have your own. And it could be to handle your business. So that's what we're going to be talking about. And these are the stories that I wish I had when I got first started. And when I first got started as an independent recording artist, you're talking about over two decades ago, and I'm still here. And now, before, when I was doing it, you know, I had a job. I've always had jobs while I was doing it. I had side hustles, extra hustles, hustle hustles. I had all kinds of things to go ahead and make my dough stretch so I could put out my music. But it has been in the last, what, in the last decade that I've been able to make a full-time living. So now, to help you speed up your process, I am dropping these things on you. This costs you nothing. This costs you nothing. I made this podcast, well, I made these episodes for this podcast specifically for this because I have these conversations with folks on a regular basis. And instead of saying the same thing over and over and over and watching folks take no action or, you know what I'm saying, or come back to me with something else, something else, something else, I'm putting it all in this podcast or in this podcast series. And so you go, you know, check out rule number one, two, three, four, and five, and now we're on six. And it's one every week, okay? And these are my 25 rules for building a successful music career independently. No help, just you. Okay, well, you'll get help along the way, friends and family. And, you know, you pay for services along the way. But I'm saying as far as your company, you doing things on your own and making it happen. And it's very, it's very possible. It's hard, but it's possible to be a solopreneur um, and and an independent artist. But you're going to really have to buckle down and be on top of your game. So I'm hoping that this will help you. So let's get into it because rule number six, we really getting into it now. We went through rule number one, which was in 96, never get drunk before or after. I mean, before or during a recording session. And you remember why, right? Because you're wasting time, you're wasting money. And that is more than likely your money. So if you're a businessman or woman, you do not want to waste your money. That was rule number one, right? You know what I'm saying? So stay on point. Don't get drunk and hot. Do that stuff after you handle your business. Okay? Because you were trying to make a superior product that people will want to buy. Product or service that people want to buy. And don't forget about rule number two, which I learned in 97, which I'm passing on to you now. Everyone's ambition isn't the same. Accept it. Meaning you have a vision and a goal for yourself. And in the beginning, people will, especially when you're younger, everybody says it's all for one, one for all. But as you see, as you will see, as you age in this thing, as you grow older, even just even if you weren't doing music, as you grow older, you'll start seeing things just kind of people just go their own way because they have their own goals. They have their own vision. And unless the visions are aligned where two people or two, three or however many people can kind of feed off each other to get towards whatever they're trying to get to, then, you know, hey, you're kind of on your own to make things happen. So, and then rule number three, which I learned in 98, right? You you get into these ruts where you, you listening to music or people are telling you what to do or you're in groups and, you know, and things are just the same. Um, you know, you're doing the same thing all the time. And so rule number three, which I learned in 98 from breaking out of the hip hop groups that I was in was to experiment to find your sound, like experiment, try different things. And it was crazy because I was just watching uh, a Jay Dilla documentary before he had passed. And they were talking about, what is it, the album Frank and Dink or something like that? Uh, I forgot the name of the album, but check out that documentary on, on Hulu. But he was experimenting with the sound. So it's kind of, you know, it, it's something that I think a lot of artists want to achieve, but you know, the labels or what they're being told business people will tell them 
to stay in this one thing so people can kind of follow um what they're doing which is cool for business but you still want to exp you know experiment with your sound so you can expand your palette but and then remember rule number four which was in 99 that I picked up, which I'm giving to you, is if if you think you got what it takes, invest in yourself and trust your process. A lot of people are going to come and they're going to say, hey, you should do this, you should do that, you should do that. But if you're the one putting the money up, right, then you have to trust in your process because nobody can't see what you're seeing. And you should be putting the money up if you say that you got what it takes. So don't be scared to invest in yourself. And then last week we covered rule number five, which I got in 2000, right? And that was write, record, publish, because you need feedback. And that was very important because how else are you going to improve? You think that you're the nicest person on the planet, right? But it's not really up to you. It's up to, for you to make something so people can judge you. <laughs> it's crazy as it sounds. If you want this thing to be a full-time living, you are, uh, I guess, customer-facing in a sense. Uh, so you have to create products you have to create something to put it out to people so you can get feedback and see if you know people are going to pay people are going to sign up to your thing people are going to say hey it sucks whatever the case may be so you have to write record and publish and so what i showed you last week that i learned in 2000 i put my first single together you know what i'm saying got the cover as, as professional as possible at that during that time and i made a thousand copies you know what i'm saying and to find out what people thought about what I was doing, because what I thought I was doing, I thought I was doing something great. So I wanted to make sure that that's what it was. And so now that was the recap of those first five. And now again, we're at rule number six. And the reason why I did the recap, because from rule number five, this rule number six, um, this was the whole really from the beginning. This probably should have been rule number one, but it is in 2001. So it is year one of the what is it? The 21st century. And it is rule number six. Dream big. Keep your head in the sky and both feet on the ground. Now, this is an interesting one, right? Because, yo, you should dream big and you, you, you should go. Go with no limits. You're, use your imagination to go wherever you want to go. If you say you want to be the first person to rock on the moon, then you, you know what I'm saying? You keep that in your head. You keep that in your mind. Don't let nobody change that from, from you. Don't let anybody take you away. Yo, my microphone is hot today. But um, dream big, man. You know, people are like, oh, you know, when you get out of school, they're like, they, you get you a job and get you some security and get you some of this and get you some of that and save your money and save for retirement. It's like, dang, you young and they're already making you think that what you're supposed to do and, and you should think ahead. But it's like, yo, they like lay out these steps. This is what you do. You go to school, you go to college, you go this and, and, and then you get a family like, yo, dude, like. You might have other dreams, and if you let other people just tell you what to do, what will end up happening, you'll become older and be like, damn, I was just doing what everybody told me to do. <laughs> Instead of going after, you you, you you got all these things ruminating in your head, right? You got all these thoughts and oh, I want to do this and that. And I think the worst thing that could happen is as you, you know, you know, you turn 20, you turn 30, you turn 40, you turn 50. And then at 50 years old, you look back and be like, oh, man, when I was 20, I should have tried this. I should have tried that. Then you turn 60, 70, 80. Oh, when I was 50, I should have tried this and I was going to do this and I was going to do that. And, and you know, it's like you're, you're only going to be here one time. Why are you playing around with the time? This is a gift. We're on borrowed time. Everything you got is borrowed. You're over here worried about, oh, I got, I got to get this car. I got to get this house. I got to get this. Those are all borrowed items. You can't take any of it with you. So more than trying to collect stuff, what is your big dream? What are you trying to accomplish? I mean, hey, maybe it is stuff. Mine was freedom of time and taking care of my family. I got it. And I got other bigger, bigger bigger things. So that's what I go after. So, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, you know, even though the dreams are humongous that I think of, like I'll be, I'll dream of something. I'm like, man, you are out of your dang on mine. But what I don't do, I, two things I don't do. I, I, I try not to, I'm going to say this one. I try not to put a timeline on things. Make, I make a timeline, an arbitrary timeline just to keep me pushing forward, right? To, you know, to keep me pushing forward. But, um, 
you know, I don't get bent out of shape if I don't hit the timeline all the time, because who am I working for? I'm working for myself. So, you know, you just adjust things or whatever like that. But the other thing that I do is that no matter how big I dream, no matter what it is um, that I'm trying to accomplish, I keep both feet on the ground. So I, you just think about the highest element of what you're trying to achieve. And it probably scaring the crap out of you. It's like, yo, I can never just, you know, from where you're at now and where you see yourself, you'd be like, man, I can never achieve that. But I urge you to keep both feet on the ground and be like, well, what does it look like? What would step one look like? More than likely, step one would go back to one of the rules where I was saying about investing in yourself, right? Investing in yourself. And you're like, oh, I ain't got the money for what I'm trying to do. But you can invest in yourself as far as education, right? That's keeping both feet on the ground, right? So you have these big big dreams. I want to be a superstar. I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to own my own uh, construction company, trucking company, jet company. I want to be the president. I want to do X, Y, and Z, whatever it is that you're trying to do. All good. But you need to keep both feet on the ground. You know what I'm saying? Because daydreaming and just, you know, oh, wishful thinking, that's all it is. Daydreaming and wishful thinking. Put both feet on the ground, hands in the dirt, and put in that work if that makes any sense. And it should make a lot of sense because for anything that you want, you got to work for it. Everybody that you admire on the highest levels, whether it's in music, sports, movies, uh, you name it from whatever business, uh, you know what I'm saying? Anything, uh, you know what I'm saying? Yo, they, they put in the work. No, you, you just don't sit around and oh, I hope things are happening. If you're sitting around you know, if you're dreaming big and just wishing for it to happen, you should buy a lotto ticket because that's what that's basically what the, the lotto is. You buy something. I mean, you are taking action in a sense. You, you know, you're spending a little bit of money and then you're hoping that something hits for you versus taking that same dollar. Right. You know, say th th uh, imagine this. You have a big dream. Let's let, and I'm going to end this with this. Let's just say you have a big dream. And, uh, you know, you are. You say that you don't have no money to uh, invest in your dream, but every weekend, you know, you're, you're chilling because you, you, you work hard. So every weekend you're, 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 you're chilling and, uh, you know, you're spending money, drinking, smoking, hanging out, doing whatever you do, do doing whatever you, you do. Right. But you have these big dreams. And when you get around your friends, ah, yo, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. But you never actually, you know, say, and so you're spending like a hundred dollars every week. It's not much, right? Every weekend, party, chill, blah, 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 blah. And then even part of that $100, you'll be like, I'm going to get my dreams out. I'm going to do my thing. But part of that $100, you go in, let's just say you spend $5 in lotto. You know what I'm saying? That's about $20 a month in lotto because, you know, hey, yo, the big power ball is up, all this stuff like that. You took no action during your, your for your dreams. You, you were partying, chilling, spending money, uh, spending time, and then buying lotto tickets. Now, Never mind all that partying and all that other stuff, right? Let's just stick with the twenty dollars that you use for lotto, right? You did wishful thinking, you did daydreaming. It's like, oh, you know, you know how it is. You buy lotto and you be like, oh man, if I get this money, I'm gonna give it to this person. I'm gonna give it to that. But I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do this and that. Meanwhile, <laughs> meanwhile, that twenty dollars in that month that you spent in lotto could have bought the first book to whatever it is that your big dream is. See, and see how the rules are starting to all coincide. See, like you know, keeping your feet in the ground and investing in yourself. You still dreaming big. You're like, hey, you know what? Let me get some. Let me take that 20 bucks and get me a course or, or some information on what I'm trying to do. Right. So there's always a way to do it. You just have to make some sacrifices. And that's part of keeping your feet on the ground. You're like, yo, especially with this hip hop and rap thing, if we're going to talk about that, because it's very misleading. You know, you got a bunch of older guys marketing to younger folks. Right. And they're marketing a lifestyle that the younger folks couldn't keep up, if, even if they wanted to. You got guys that are saying that they're smoking ounces a day. You know what I'm saying? Wearing the finest linens, driving the finest car, eating the finest food. And you say that you want that. Right. But instead of working towards it, that big dream and keeping your feet on the ground, instead of working towards it, you're just watching it and trying to emulate it. And you say that if I emulate it enough, maybe it'll happen for me. And I'm going to tell you, you know, this recipe for failure. It's a recipe for failure. So it's cool to dream big. Look at whoever you're looking at that you want to model your life after. Yeah, look at it. Admire it. 
You know what I'm saying? Use it as a blueprint. You know what I'm saying? But it ain't your print. You know what I'm saying? You have to make your own footsteps. So you had to put in that work. So that's I'm going to leave it at that. This is rule number six. I got this in 01. Dream big and keep your head in the sky, but both feet on the ground. Oh, and before I go, what I was telling you is like, yo, remember in 2000, I made that CD. Well, guess what? That thousand CDs in 2001, I was still pushing those CDs. So even though I had this vision for myself as an independent artist, you know what I'm saying? I took that same single for over a year and still was pushing it because I had the CDs. I invested my money and I believed in myself. So I didn't just put out a song and it was like, oh, yo, it's yo, everything's going to change the next day. No, it was a constant every day. You know what I'm saying? A fan a day. And yo, think about that. I want to rock a crowd of 100,000. I want to sell 100 million records. Meanwhile, I got a CD and I'm doing a, a fan a day. And that's what I mean by keep your head in the sky, put both feet on the ground. Dream big. Yo, it's Uni V Soul. MC. I'm out. Peace.